It's an important factor that has a serious impact on the forecasting and survival. Nutrition screening and nutrition insufficiency uh, issues should be a very important uh, element of the uh, clinical um, uh, testing and the protocols. The loss of weight, according to uh, different sources, is registered with uh, 40% uh, of the uh, cancer patients. And there are specific features here, because after surgery, uh, the uh, loss of weight might lead to complications. The surgery lead, uh, to, leads to inflammations uh, very often, and uh, very often leads to negative reactions. And, and the functional rehabilitation of the system requires high quality metabolic response which can be uh, achieved of course but if the inflammation is long term and the patient uh, is uh, not getting the necessary nutrition then the problem might be aggravated the health and University. We have been working for quite a while on these aspects, uh, and a year ago, on the basis of our own experience and considering the analysis of uh, international clinical studies, um, um, after surgery for patients after surgery, on the basis of the analysis. The analysis of the um, methodology is um, applied for the assessment and for the um, development of the uh, new um, recommendations. We carried out a study, a research, um, and uh, about a thousand patients have been involved. Uh, uh, there is um, a control group uh, with uh, different levels of uh, uh, nutrition insufficiency uh, with uh, different um, methods of um, modifying treatment, abdominal localization, cervical localization of cancer. The, uh, the systematization, the development of the um, easy methods and uh, clear-cut methods of assessment, uh, of methods that can correct us with the proper organization of nutrition, not only in the federal centers, but in the district hospitals is the focus. And uh, we also develop the, uh, the model uh, considering uh, the direct expenses associated with the different types of feeding. And our goal was to Uh, to, to define um, the expenses associated with the um, additional nutrition for patients. So the index of the body mass and uh, body weight is a very important aspect for us. And uh, all this work is actually started as soon as the diagnosis is set. Now, in order to assess the nutrition insufficiency, we work with different protocols. And uh, the patients go through a treatment. We have a screening card, the diagnostic card, uh, the uh, 
card of clinical monitoring, the outcomes, and uh, uh, so there is a record of everything that is happening. And actually, uh, this record is in the hands of the patient himself or herself. When these cards are being uh, drafted, we use our own experience and also the experience of the American and European societies. Uh, and uh, we, ha- we have developed the route, so to speak, the, or the itinerary um, that um, helps with that. All the patients with uh, nutrition insufficiency uh, get peril. A tube uh, uh, nutrition 14 days prior to um, admission. If um, medical treatment, if uh, drug treatment or surgical treatment is to be provided, and uh, um, the uh, nutrition specialists have the necessary recommendations also um, at the later stage. Uh, now, the patients um, get. Um, and, uh, nutrition if there are indications for it uh, for a whole period of going through uh, um, uh, treatment and uh, usually this period is about one uh, from one to six months long I, uh, here is the uh, the the card uh, I mentioned that's what it looks like um, with the assessment with the doses and so on, and we can see if there is a a nutrition insufficiency and if there is a need uh, to correct the um, nutrition status. Now, uh, the stage stage are defined, and uh, then we start the calculations, uh, and uh, all this should be based on Uh, the following principles, uh, um, adequacy, acceptability, and uh, uh, should be provided on time. Now, uh, so we define the need, we uh, select the type, and define uh, the volume. And uh, so, it's, so as you can see, 30 uh, kilocalories, so 1% of the independently Um, taken in food and uh, we so we define the need as I said three, 30 kilocalories uh, per uh, uh, kilo of body weight per day the same goes for protein 1.5 per one kilo of weight and uh, um, and um, fatty acids per day, two grams of fatty acids per day. And uh, um, if the uh, 50 to uh, 100% through sipping uh, plus to the uh, ordinary food, 25 to 50% um, extra uh, methods. And uh, then we define uh, the amounts following a formula. Uh, then uh, nutrition monitoring is carried out, and uh, we either prescribe um, additional amounts or we approve what is being already done. Here is the kind of clinical monitoring, and uh, the quality of life is assessed. And here is the uh, outcome card after uh, 20, uh, 30 days after surgery, and uh, after modifying treatment. Uh, so we carried out the analysis of uh, um, uh, the situation, and we take different tests in order to understand if there is a further need to provide uh, uh, extra uh, nutrition. And uh, these records um, are kept by the patients themselves. But here, um, in this slide, you can see what happens with the patient uh, uh, with surgery. It's four weeks, you can see um, surgery, treatment, uh, 
um, uh, correction of nutrition insufficiency and uh, uh, um, enteral feeding if necessary, uh, peroral if needed. And uh, you can see the early, uh, the earliest possible intake of food. And uh, the same um, is done for uh, chemotherapy and uh, radiotherapy. And I need to say that um, patients were involved here, patients who are um, not in hospital, who um, are at home, but who come to the medical center for daily treatment. So the present day scheme of treatment uh, is based on two parallel approaches. Now, um, when the diagnosis is um, uh, obtained, then we assess the uh, nutrition status of the patient. Then we develop a plan of nutrition support of, for the patient at the start of therapy or prior to the start of uh, modifying therapy. Uh, nutrition support is being provided and the control, the optimization um, um, uh, of treatment are associated with the control and optimization of nutrition. Thus, we can say that uh, most of the uh, cancer patients um, suffer from uh, the problems of uh, uh, nutrition status, and these can lead to death. The necessary diagnostics uh, should be provided from the first visit of the patient to the oncologist. The adequate uh, nutrition support uh, will improve the uh, tolerance and the efficacy of treatment and will lead to better outcomes. Now, in this presentation, we uh, cannot yet speak about the clinical part of our study because the final, uh, the last patient will um, 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 be released and then we will analyze all the data. Now, this is my final slide. Uh, what are the topical issues? There are no um, easily accessible and uh, science-based recommendations for practical use of, uh, uh, use, uh, of nutrition and the assessment of nutrition status. Uh, the um, assessment of nutrition status is not yet mandatory, and uh, the um, amount of money that can be spent on the additional nutrition is not being properly calculated. And uh, so there is no proper clinical and economic model that makes it possible to make the necessary calculations. And I would like to emphasize uh, uh, that uh, Dr. Zelenova will uh, speak at about five o'clock about the nutrition support. Uh, and her presentation will be within the framework of our research, of our study. And so I invite you to listen to her presentation. And thank you for the chance to speak here. Thank you, thank you very much.